Hello everyone, in this video we will solve questions related to vectors from AS Physics. First question is, a crane has an arm to be attached to frictionless pulley. A cable passes over the pulley and supports a load of 10 kN as shown. So there are two ropes, each rope is having 10 kN force and there is a crane arm on which force F is actually acting. You have to find out what is the value of F. If the system is actually balanced as it's written supports which means equilibrium or balanced condition so you have to uh, resolve these two forces which is of 10 kilo Newton making angle 30 degree with the crane arm so according to resolution of vector I'll complete the triangle and these are the two forces which is making up 10 kilo Newton so these forces are vectors to be added and this is the resultant vector this is fx and this is fy now as you can see there is no um, link of fy with f because f is actually a force which is on the horizontal axis and this is actually balancing fx and similarly if i solve this fx is equal to f cos theta by the vector triangle so it will become 10 cos 30 and this will give you 8.7 kilo newton answer but as you can see there are not just uh, there are there is not just a single rope balancing f there are two ropes uh, each is having 10 kilo newton force so it will be multiplied by 2 because the same vector will be made for the second force and this will also give you um, same 8.7 and uh, kilonewton resultant these two forces fx are on horizontal direction and f is actually balanced out by two horizontal forces fx okay so by this you will have 17 kilonewton as your answer in the next question there are two forces of equal magnitude and represented by two coplanar vectors coplanar means the vectors that are on two dimensions uh, one is directed towards the east and the other is directed towards the north so you can take the magnitude by your choice I have just drawn a line pointing towards east as it is written one vector is towards east I am drawing the same length which is representing same magnitude of the vector but in uh, north direction because the second vector is due north these two vectors are added and the third vector will be drawn from the tail of first to the head of second but this vector is actually this vector triangle will actually be the triangle that will balance the forces right so this is actually condition of equilibrium so we will not make uh, the third vector as resultant the third vector will be uh, the vector which will balance the resultant of these two vectors which means this this triangle will be a closed triangle because this is the condition of equilibrium and whenever the condition of equilibrium comes you have to draw a closed triangle so the third vector is actually completing the circle now you have to find out the direction in order to find out the direction you will draw the geographical coordinates on uh, this side such as that the third vector which is actually balancing these two vectors is a uh, pointing away from the origin of these coordinates so this is north south east and west and this vector is actually in between south and west so towards southwest is the answer now in this question the speed of an aircraft in still air is 200 kilometers per hour the wind blows from the west at a speed of 85 kilometers per hour from the west means towards east in which direction must the pilot steer the aircraft in order to fly due north in this case there are two vectors one is 85 kilometers per hour due east the second vector which is of 200 kilometers per hour the magnitude is given but you do not know the direction of this vector and the third vector is actually the resultant vector which is due north you know the direction but you do not know the magnitude of uh, this vector according to the situation i'm drawing 85 kilometers per hour vector due east as it's written in the question and since the resultant is given 
which is due north it means the pilot has to fly due north which means the resultant will be due north so I am drawing the resultant vector first because 85 kilometers per hour is the vector to be added and this vector is actually the vector which is the resultant vector so the tail so the head of these two vectors will be connected so by this triangle you can see that 200 kilometers per hour vector will be in this direction because 285 are vectors to be added which are in clockwise direction and the vector which is due north is actually the resultant and this is in anti-clockwise direction according to the rule so if this is 85 this is 200 so you have to find out this angle which is actually made by the flying aeroplane so that it finally flies due north by this this is opposite this is hypotenuse so opposite and hypotenuse make a sign when you will solve it you will get 25.2 as the magnitude and by this triangle you can see that the resultant the 200 vector is actually in between north and west so it is actually west of north north to west means west to north west of north sorry so this is the answer in this question you have to find out the vertical component of displacement vector so I am completing its triangle these are vector to be added and this is the resultant so this is horizontal displacement as X vertical displacement as Y as we have to find out the vertical so S Y is equal to S sine theta and by this you will get 5 sine 37 and it will become 3 kilometers by calculation and you have to mark which quantity is a scalar and which is vector energy is a scalar momentum is vector power is a scalar time is a scalar weight is vector vector are those physical quantities that have unit magnitude and direction while scalars are the quantities just that just have unit and magnitude in this question it's written girl runs 120 meter due north in 15 seconds she then runs 80 meter due east in 12 seconds you have to draw a vector triangle in which you have to um, label the resultant displacement r i'm selecting scale 1 centimeter is equal to 20 meters so according to 120 meter due north i've drawn 6 centimeters due north then from the head of first i've drawn 4 centimeters because each centimeter is 20 meters so 4 centimeter due east and the resultant is from the tail of first to the head of second the vectors to be added are in clockwise direction so the resultant is in anti-clockwise direction and I have labeled this R they do not want you to find out the magnitude of this vector right now so just leave it average speed is actually total displacement total distance upon total time total distance is 120 plus 80 total time is 15 plus 12 seconds so it will become 200 divided by 27 and it will be the ratio will be 7.407 according to the rule of significant figure you can round it off to two significant figures according to the data so it will become 7.4 meters per second to find out average displacement average velocity you have to find out average displacement by unit time average displacement will be found by solving vector triangle 6 centimeters due north 4 centimeters due east resultant is actually found by Pythagoras theorem r square is equal to hypotenuse square is equal to base square plus perpendicular square so 120 square plus 80 square so 120 square is 14,400 6400 is 80 square to 20,800 is r square so r is 144.22 so this is total displacement 144.22 you will divide it by the total time which is 27 144.22 divided by 27 gives you 5.34 so i've written 5.3 because in data there are just two significant figures so in answer there cannot be more than two now you have to find out the angle 
the angle of velocity is actually the angle of displacement so you have to find out this angle tangent theta is equal to f y upon f x or the vertical uh, or you can say opposite upon adjacent so opposite is 4 adjacent is 6 you can also take 80 upon 120 because this is 80 and this is 120 you, this will give you the same answer theta is equal to tangent inverse 4 upon 6 it will be, give you 34 degrees moving on to next question a pendulum bob is held stationary by a horizontal force in this case there are three forces t h and w as you can see h and w are on x and y axis so you cannot resolve these two forces but you will resolve this force t which is actually in, um, has its effect on horizontal and vertical axis both so you resolve this force complete its triangle if this is anti-clockwise so the vectors to be added will be in clockwise direction this is ty because it's vertically acting this is tx now if this is the angle so it is opposite and this is adjacent so ty is actually t cos 30 and tx is equal to t sin 30 because in this triangle x is actually the opposite side of the triangle so you will not write tx is equal to t cos 30 and ty is equal to t sin 30 right because the angle is not with the x-axis it is with the y-axis so you can just relate to the trigonometric ratios for this now we have according to this situation we have four forces ty tx h and w vertical forces are ty and w and they are balancing each other out so ty is actually equal to w so i i can write t cos 30 is equal to w similarly h is equal to tx or you can write t sin 30 is equal to h so when you will see the options you will see that this is actually equal to uh, w is equal to t cos 30 is the right answer out of these four so d now this question which we have already done in lecture y is given and you have to find out x minus y in order to find out x minus y you actually have to add minus y in x x is already drawn so you will draw minus y with the head of x the resultant will be from the tail of first to the head of second and this is z this is here in this example there are two forces but the problem is their tails are connected so according to the vector rule you will not let them be connected so you will displace this vector on the head of the first so I have drawn the same magnitude but with the head of the first vector the length is same the direction is same but it is just drawn on the head of first right resultant is from the tail of first vector to the head of second and if you take the length it will be the same length as this vector and this one so if this is 10 newton this is 10 newton then this is also 10 newton so according to this this is of 10 newton because it is an equilateral triangle vertical force is given resultant is given you have to find out the horizontal force if I complete the triangle I can see that this is resultant 3 Newton force is actually this one and this is unknown so according to Pythagoras theorem 5 square is equal to 3 square plus x square by solving you will get x is equal to 4 Newton you have been given with these four options each option has x and y component you have to find out which has the largest magnitude the largest magnitude is actually the option that has the greater greatest x square and y square values so x square is 4 y square is 8 it is with uh, y square is 81 so it is 85 x square is 9 y square is 64 it is 73 x squared is 16 y squared is 49 so it is uh, 
65 and this is 61 according to these four options 85 is the largest uh, you can see hypotenuse square so it will have largest resultant value as well vertical component horizontal component and this is resultant complete the vector triangle resultant vertical and horizontal horizontal is given and the angle is also given horizontal force is f x vertical force is f y if i write f x is equal to f cos th theta f x is 20 f is unknown cos 30 so by this equation f is equal to 23.1 now you have to find out the vertical component f y is equal to f sine theta f is 23.1 sine 30 it will give you 11.5 newton p and q you have to find out p minus q or you can say p plus minus q if this is q minus q will be of the same magnitude but in opposite direction and you can draw this with the head of first vector which is p resultant will be from the tail of first to the head of second so this is actually the resultant p minus q and this is option c according to the situation last question of this lecture two forces three newton and four newton are acting you have to find out the line of action of the resultant force the line of action of the resultant force must pass uh, if you extend this line of action of force and if you extend the line of action of force of four newton you can see that this is the point of intersection line of action of force is actually the for, uh, will always pass through the point of intersection of the two forces to be added so according to this situation b and d cannot be the answer because they are not passing through the point of intersection of these two forces so b and d are wrong now between a and c you have to find out which one is correct the difference between a and c is the angle this option has a lesser angle of 5 newton force with the x-axis and this has a greater angle with the x-axis uh, so as you can see 4 newton force is bigger than 3 newton force and 4 newton force is acting on the x-axis which means the resultant will be towards x-axis more as compared to y-axis so since option a has a smaller angle with the x-axis so option a is correct answer resultant force will be inclined towards uh, the force that has a greater magnitude that was all for this lecture i hope you like the video i uh, i hope it will help um, reinforce the concepts please give review feedback and please subscribe if you like thanks